I'm out here near a fishing spot, walking my bike down a trail. I was thinking of doing one of those videos where I ride my bike and talk, but those don't really work. Don't usually get a lot of views either. Anyway, I'm gonna, before I, if you've been following this channel at all in the last few days, you know that I've agreed to do a collab with Stank the Minded to, uh, for encouragement among the Christian community and just anybody who needs encouragement, really, because that's part of what God has called us Christians to do. Before I do that, though, I'm making this video because I need to get something off my chest. Which is also why my Numbers series has been temporarily grounded to a halt. I'm gonna see if I can finish recording that video I started making yesterday. I don't know if I... I don't know if I um, will upload it today or not. Although I'm gonna try to upload that one that other Zelda video I recorded because someone's been begging for it. It's a lot of Tetranithas. Might end up getting a Tetranitha or two on me. <laughs> That'll be exciting. You guys will get to hear me scream. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to talk about. This quarantine has really driven me mad. And yesterday was refreshing. Because not only did I get to not only did I get to hang out with my girlfriend, but also because this yesterday was the date when all this was supposed to end and at least stuff was supposed to semi go back to normal. But we've decided we decided to hang out because at this point the stay at home order has just gotten absurd. And uh more than anything else, this quarantine has showed how horrifyingly willing people are to obey the government. I'm not saying that's entirely a bad thing. But if anybody other than Trump were in office, I would think that there's some ulterior motive going on. That's not what we're here to talk about today. I've been battling dark, legalistic thoughts for a long time. I made some videos on it before, but I've never touched on it like I have before, and I won't go deep into the whole thing, because even though I can make videos longer than 15 minutes now, I'm going to try to still go no longer than 15 minutes. You see, when you're under legalism, you don't really pay attention to the gospel of grace that much. And it's harder to rest knowing that Christ has sacrificed himself and obeyed the laws so that you wouldn't have to, and we're credited with his righteousness. In fact, Christ even raised the bar a little on the law. Well, not a little, a lot. None of us, in our own power, have hope of measuring up. Which is why we need him. Which is why we need to rest in his sacrifice. But sometimes we let the enemy whisper into our ears, oh, you're just using this as an excuse to sin. You just want an excuse to sin. Or, you know, the sacrifice only works once. You have to do the rest on your own. Because Christ didn't actually atone. Because that's what the enemy wants you to think. Although if you're like me, sometimes you tell yourself that and then you think, oh well I'm just trying to make a bigger excuse for myself. Now I'm at the bridge that I gotta cross to get back on the trail. Nice lake, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a really pretty spot. make my way back towards the road as I'm talking. I might sign off and then get back to talking when I'm back on the trail. So, as I was saying, I've been battling with thoughts like this for a long time, but ever since quarantine started, it got a lot worse. Because 
being stuck in a house all day with more or less nothing to do. It gets really hard to ignore thoughts that you've been suppressing. And it's not always a bad thing to suppress thoughts, but some do need to be dealt with because they won't cause you to lose your salvation, but they can cause you to misunderstand it and it can make your relationship with God seem off as if because when you think that because when you deal with what I did and you think that every little thing you do God's going to punish you by letting somebody you love or care about get hurt that's not who God is but Satan any, any lie he can tell us to make us think that, he'll tell it. And he does it so convincingly that sometimes we might mistake it to be true. And it happens a lot when you read the Old Testament without New Covenant thinking, without New Covenant eyes. Because we're living under the New Covenant. When we read the Old Testament... We have to read it from the perspective of the New Covenant. Because the Old Testament still applies, and it's still important. Because it makes the New Covenant make sense. But when we give it, but when we don't look at it with New Covenant eyes, we can, Satan loves it. Because if, you, if you're relying on the law for your salvation, or for blessings, then you better obey every letter of that law. And if you fail at one, you fail at it all. That's how powerful the law is. And as long as Satan can keep you under the mindset that following the law is what earns your salvation or blessings, or rather maintains it, most of us are aware that we can't earn our salvation, but a lot of us are tricked into thinking we have to maintain it. Well, if we didn't earn it, there's nothing we can do to maintain it. The Bible makes that abundantly clear. We are saved by grace through faith and not of our works. Or some translation says that, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. Anyway, I'm getting pretty close to the road. I'm going to finish up. I'm going to finish out here, and then when I get back on the trail, we'll talk more. Back on the trail, heading in the direction of my house. I'm not exactly sure where we left off in the discussion, but I don't have time to check back because my tablet doesn't have a lot of charge left. Which is why I'm going to try to avoid going on any more tangents, because... Because of my battery, we gotta move. In any case, pretty sure I left off along the lines of when we end up in a, under this legalistic mindset, it's easy to become afraid of God and the world in, in a very unhealthy way. See, there's fear of the Lord as in a kind of reverence and respect for God, acknowledging that He is holy and we are sinful, which is why we need to trust in the sacrifice of Christ for our righteousness and taking our thoughts captive to His obedience and relying on that to make us righteous, because there is not enough good we can do and not enough bad we can abstain from doing to earn favor with God. And when we, and when we forget that, when we start to think that we need to work to maintain our salvation, or to earn blessings, or maintain any blessings that we've earned, or to keep somebody we love from getting hurt, because we think that God is going to hurt somebody or kill somebody that we care about, if we don't, or at least that's what I was dealing with for a while. It took a lot of talking with the pastor and praying for me to get over it. Eventually I came to realize that's not how God works. In fact, I always knew that's not how God works. 
because whatever disobedience I have was taken care of on the cross. And even if you aren't dealing exactly with what I did, when you end up under a legalistic mindset, it's very easy to think that God is cruel. And some of you who are feeling this way and are watching this, you're probably thinking, well, I don't think God is cruel. Well, are you sure you believe that? Or is it because because you're afraid to admit it because you think that God is going to punish you for saying it. Look, God understands that you're struggling. And your struggle is not too big for God to handle. In fact, God prefers that you let it out, talk about it, rather than bottle it up. You see, I don't think that God is cruel. I know God's not cruel. And those thoughts that the enemy was putting in my head, I know they're not real. It became discouraging because the thoughts wouldn't stop. You see, if you're in Christ, your good works do matter. But it's not to maintain your salvation or to earn it, or even to earn blessings and maintain them. They're all unconditionally given by God in their seasons. Why our good works matter? I realize it's not only because it's not only because that uh, we are to set an example to the rest of the world of what God can do and how He can change our hearts. But it's also us laboring to enter into his rest. We rest in the finished work of Christ. And the works we do can make him appreciate can make us appreciate his sacrifice that much more. Because our works, even if we do, even if we were to most of the time or all the time do exactly what God tells us to do every time, we still haven't done it perfectly. Because even though Christ has made us perfect in spirit, our flesh, our bodies, we're, not, we're still not perfect. Even though we are credited with that perfection. And that's how our salvation is maintained. It's nothing we did. It's, it's the gift of God through Christ. It's in Ephesians chapter 8, I believe. And speaking of reading the Old Testament with a new covenant mindset. Last few days I've been uh, going, going over the chapter of Job. Only lightly, but still going through it nonetheless. Job was correct when he said that God gives and takes away. But these days we don't, I'm not even sure Job realizes, or at the time realized, why he was right. God does give and take away. You see, through the death and resurrection of Christ, takes away our condemnation, and he gives us his righteousness. And when we seek first the kingdom of God, by resting in the sacrifices of Christ, by trusting in that, and doing our best to be a witness to everyone else, because we don't all have the answers, and we don't all know exactly how we're called to go about it, because we are all called to go about witnessing in different ways, because God has given us each different talents, and a different, I guess you could say a different audience to, to use those talents on, to bring people to Him. But when we rest in Christ, God unconditionally adds blessings to us. 
does God award us for the things we do? Of course he does. But we have to be careful not to not to think that it's all done through our works because ultimately it's still a gift from God. And the vast majority of the time it is unconditional. Like fasting, for example. I'm going to make I plan to make my own separate video on that in another time because I think it's very dangerous how misunderstood fasting is, especially among a lot of Christians on YouTube. And especially now with the times that we're in. See, fasting is not a way we maintain blessings or earn blessings or salvation or anything like that. And a lot of legalistic YouTubers out there they think that fasting is something that has to be done in order to get certain prayers answered. No, that's not what fasting is. Fasting, the short answer to this is that fasting is a form of worship. It's spending time with God instead of doing something else. Because fasting, you can fast from other things than food. It's when you show that, it's when you symbolically tell God that, or let God know that He's in charge and not in the flesh. And will God bless you for fasting? He will. But a lot of legalists out there, they think it's the only way to get certain prayers answered or certain blessings. When really those two, just like salvation, are a gift from God. I'm not saying don't do these things, because any okay. yeah, any form of worship is a good thing, but it can lead a lot of people to think that if some if for some reason they break the fast early, that God will punish them, or if they break the fast on time, that they're going to get punished because God wants them to do it longer. But that's not the case. God knows we're still imperfect. If you end a fast early, I don't encourage doing that, but you're not going to you're not going to get punished for it. Anyways, guys. I hope this video encourages you and makes you guys feel a little better about some things. Knowing that you're not alone in your struggles, and sometimes we have scary thoughts in our head that are not from God, but the enemy likes us to think that it is, because he knows that it can get us off track where God actually wants us to go. But with God's help, we can take our thoughts captive to his obedience. And I'm sorry I haven't stopped to really quote a lot of scripture in this. But God has laid it on my heart to make this video like this. And I know that God has laid this on my heart because I there's, a, there's just a comfort in the idea that was put in my mind. And I know that God wasn't going to, he wasn't going to punish me if I didn't or was late on doing it motivated me to do it and actually do it that much sooner even though I did hesitate a little bit because I was worried about I was worried about sounding wrong or giving people the wrong idea but I pray that this that God lets this video speak to people and that the right the right people who will understand and find it guys want you to know that God's not cruel, that he's not looking, he's not watching you, he's not, I mean, he's watching you, but he's not watching your every move, waiting to strike you with a lightning bolt, or something like that, each time you mess up, because if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation for you, 
sometimes there are worldly consequences to our sins, but there is no condemnation. You did not lose your salvation and any blessings God has given to you. You get to keep them. Or, if not, many times God is still make, God will still make a way for you to be redeemed, seeking first the kingdom of heaven. Anyways, guys, I hope this video has blessed you. I hope that it's made some sense. I'm sorry it got kind of longer than I was expecting. My phone is ringing. I should probably answer it soon. Doing all right? Yeah. Oh, and uh, people are starting to get worried about me. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. God bless.